Thank you for listening to another edition of Interview with DJ Nocturna. If you're listening on ModSnap Radio, on my podcast, or my YouTube channel, search DJ Nocturna. Um, please like, subscribe, share, and comment if you like this video. My guest is um, the founder of the amazing label, Project Label, the Project Records. He's also the keyboardist, songwriter, and producer, and founder of Black Tape for Blue Girl, Sam Rosenthal. So it's a pleasure to have you on the show. I've been uh, yeah, yeah. wanting to, I've been wanting to interview for a very long time. You know, I've been since I've been um, you know, I'll tell you the um, I discovered a lot of new music through Project, and mm -hmm. I, one of the most memorable one I have to and I have to say it because it really did um, influence me a lot um, was your review on Spiritual Front. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah, that's a uh, I'm again on Gigolo. Right. But that that is such an amazing album. When I first heard that and I read your review and I, you know, I of course whatever you say I'm going to listen to it because I know it's going to be good. And I listened I I heard that album and I'm like I was after that I was hooked. So I, I know they had two other albums or something like that before before this one. I had to go back and look for it and I bought it um from Project. And then uh yeah, and ever since then I've been listening to them. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <Thanks to> you, because <laughs> I, I know oh, yeah. you, I, I know that's one of your favorite. I think it's one of your favorite um, albums, right? Um, yeah, you know they have a more recent album, and I'm going to butcher the name. Is it Black Heart and Red? Yeah, yeah, yeah that that one's good too. Yeah, yeah, I re I really like that one just because of the arrangement is so like sparse. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, Armageddon Gigolo for like you know into yeah. the more poppy side is like just an amazing album. Oh yeah, totally. And then I, well, that's why I was like, oh my God. And I think I discovered many other stuff, of course, you know, um, Love Spy was downward, you know, and um, of course Voltaire is on your label as well. And uh, Trans to the Sun. I think I, I think I learned about that from your label, I think. Yeah. And um, I don't know if you heard my interview with uh, Ashkelon Sane. I just did a while, just a few weeks ago. Yeah. Oh no, I got to check it out. He's here in Portland yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah, I know. That's what I was going to say. He lives in Portland. And um, yeah, so yeah, so I just um, it's so it's so wonderful to have you on the show, and and I know that uh, you also have this amazing collection of Christmas music that usually comes out about that that I love to play around Christmas time. You know your mm -hmm. um, um, Excelsis, yeah, it's it's yeah yeah sure yeah, that's a, that's the name. Of, I know there's several of them that came out, and I know some of them are out of print now. I've collected a few CDs of that for through through the years, and I've been playing them on my my former radio show, KTUH, uh, Feast of Friends, for a very long time. Every holiday, I would play, you know, one, one of my favorite tracks from there is um, Carol of the Bells. Um, Carol, the, you know that one by This Ascension? That one, oh, I, yeah. I, I love their version. Um, yeah, I mean, I just, well, it's one of my favorite Christmas songs. And of course, uh, you know, Attrition. I always love his Silent Night. <laughs> and Martin just does a great, you know, he just does that thing, even like, <laughs> Even his voice alone is just it just gets like oh it's so creepy but I love it you know. <laughs> <the thing. laughs> Martin yeah, is like so. actually he's the guy I've known the longest. I we were first in touch in the early eighties. So oh yeah, he's yeah. Been like the longest alternative artist I've you know been in touch with. It's great. Yeah, he's such a pioneer. You know, he's been to Hawaii and I think almost every interview I've been doing for the last few a few ones I I mentioned him because he's done a lot of their remixing, their remastering of the albums, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, he's he's a great guy. I, I I totally love that guy so much, and um, yeah. So I I just want I just want to you know congratulate you with keeping up with project and putting all these albums out, especially this Christmas thing that everybody uh, because you know where are you gonna find goth Christmas goth goth Christmas music, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I mean it's actually sure. more beautiful than the regular Christmas music at some point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, Excelsis, the first one was out of print for a while, like you said, and. We just got the vinyl in, but we got it in like, you know, five days ago. So it's mm -hmm. a little oh. bit too late for Christmas this year, but we do, you know, the vinyl will continue to be around for a while now. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, 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 those can always, they always come back. Mm -hmm. That's why I, you know, um, when I did the interview with um, Ethan Marolis, you know, we were talking about his, you know, he did some Christmas stuff too. And then he goes, oh, like, we can play the next year, next year. I go, oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Is, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it come back. <laughs> His one with Sue, we put out um, up through Project Digitally, the new yeah. one that they just, well, I guess it's two years ago now, but it's mm -hmm. relatively new. <laughs> yeah, and the Dark Noel, and uh, that's just all great stuff. And then, of course, your 
your compilation of all these different artists, um, which I discovered a lot of the bands in there. I, you know, I, I wouldn't know about it if I didn't listen to it. So, yeah, that's one thing I have to say. That project is um is such a wonderful label, and I'm glad you're you're still doing this. Really, um, it's been around since what for 38 years now. So like, yeah. I I mean, my first cassette came out in 1983, so yeah. it was, and then it grew from there. The first CD was 89, but it's, uh, but it's, I've been doing it full time for like 30, what, 30, 30 years now. Yeah. So, you know, how, how, how did you start out with, I mean, you know, a lot of people, they start out in the garage or something like that, you know, like the early days or they start in their little room or something like that. Yeah. I mean, I, I was in college and I got a keyboard and started making music and I was making a fanzine at the same time. So the label started as a way to put some of my music and other people I was writing about onto a cassette. And then those were like a, on consignment at some local record stores. So it was sort of an offshoot of the, the fanzine more than anything else. Wow, and that was like so long ago. I mean, you, you look back, 1983 is kind of like a long time ago. I mean, you, you know, a lot of people weren't even born yet and they're listening to Project right now, you know? Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, so, and then in, oh, sorry, continue. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, and then mid '90s is kind of when it it really grew because Love Spirals Downwards and Lycia and Black Tape were, mm -hmm. were all doing things at the same time, and so that right. was took almost a decade before it actually got really out there where people knew about it. So. If somebody wanted to to be in project, how, how do you? How, what's the criteria? I know is is it a, a same type of sort of like the same type of music or? Yeah, I mean, I think I like a wider range of music than what it seems people who like project are looking for, mm -hmm. and so there is some you know criteria to keep it within what people expect from project. Um, these days, there's a lot more releases on the electronic instrumental side versus the dark wave side. Um, I guess it's just because a lot of the original bands like Los Spirals Downwards isn't together anymore. L Lycia, they have some new stuff and they're doing it with a label in Italy. So there's a bit less of uh, the original bands around now. I know it's great. Uh, and I noticed you spell it differently. Is there a reason? I mean, I like the spelling. It's just it's unique. I mean, if it was if it was with a C, then I don't know. I think case. <laughs> <laughs> well, my mom was Swiss and it was the the German, Swiss German way to spell it. And oh, that, okay. Well, it's, it's you sort of, known. Yeah, if you if you look at it, if you Google that, you it's the only one that pops up. Oh, in America, yeah. When you do it in Europe, though, there's a lot oh, of yeah. there's a lot of things that have the K because it's the German word. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, you know, um, you know, uh, what do you think is like the best um, best selling album and project? Because I know there's so many bands through the years and. Well, the best selling album was a f compilation we did for Hot Topic. Oh, um, okay. Uh, it was the Project Gothic compilation. It was like a $3 on the counter compilation. So I, it was, I, I probably have that. <laughs> yeah, it has a drawing of, uh, I think it's like an elf on the cover. Mm -hmm. It's kind of green and white. And so that one, it was $3 on the counter. And so they moved out a lot in uh, 97 or something like that. And then if you take that, Three dollar off. Excelsis was the best selling compilation, the first one, and mm -hmm. then Black Tip for Blue Girls, Remnants of a Deeper Purity was the best selling um, band album. Mm -hmm. But you know, Voltaire, his first one is a little bit less, but they're so close to each other now, you know. And and it's also it's so hard to measure now because of people aren't buying CDs, you know, they're streaming and downloading and mostly streaming, so it's hard to measure things. You know, I would always say, you know, buy buy the music, buy the CD, the actual the actual um, physical CD, because I mean, these things in computers now, you never know they could disappear. I mean, honestly, or they fade. I mean, really, there's no way of knowing for sure. But even you have the physical thing. I mean, that's when I have I collected so many CDs and if I like them, I keep them. I'll keep them forever. I'm not I don't care if they're I'll figure out a way to play them again, even if they run out of. <laughs> even yeah. if another thing to play anymore you know like records i mean that you can never i mean i mean i have a lot of music too of course you know people send me music but you know somehow i i noticed that some of them kind of fade away i don't know if it's the i don't know what it is it doesn't sound as good as it used to hmm. if, if yeah 
and if your hard drive crashes, you can lose a lot of your downloads yeah. if you're not backed yeah. up and stuff. So, I mean, I like physical because you can also design the book list and things. And, mm -hmm. you know, I like the visual aspect of it all. And, and that, that, hey, uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and now, now with LPs being able to design a big thing again, it's just so nice. I know, right? I mean, that's covers. what. I mean, that's what music is about, about designing, you know, making the album cover and all that. I mean, it's so memorable. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, another um, artist on your label is Soraya and uh, Ashkelon Sane. I, I see that on the, on the yeah. And um, yeah, I, I was talking to him about that a little bit when we, when we talked about um, Ashkelon. When we, when we talked about his music, we talked a little bit about Soraya. And, and that's available on um, the project label, right? Soraya and Ashkelon Sane. Right, the, they they had two albums together um, that came out. Um, I'm gonna get, I don't remember the dates exactly. 2007, yeah. 2011 era, I think. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah and, and they did a lot of touring. They have a live album up on their band camp, and yeah, they're just a great band. And and Enrique has put out a Soraya album on his own recently. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Um, it's on. I think it's vinyl only. Yeah, I would love to chat with him about. It. Just it's just amazing how that. Yeah, you have such a variety on your on your label, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, I mean, yeah, the criteria was kind of things I liked that sort of would fit together, but it covers a pretty wide range of mm -hmm. what what that is. And so, yeah, their release sort of it's somewhere between the dark wave and the electronic side because it has, you know, the instrumental sections and the instruments Enrique's playing. Yeah. I think I also saw, um, I think I also, Carolyn Camera was also on your label, right? You, you... Uh, we sold it through the mail order, but they weren't on the label. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I saw that too. I mean, I, I go frequently to your site and I just look, you know, because I always uh, love all the music that you put out. And I know you're you're also a father. Uh -huh, sure. Yeah, and, and, and your son must be older now, right? I mean, Yeah, he's a sophomore in college older. now. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. So you kind of balance your your work with uh with your you know with your son well he's i mean he goes to school south of here so he's he's around for the holidays right now but it, it, it definitely there was the intense period when he was very young and then as he got you know middle school and high school he was more independent so he could you know i can sort of i when we moved to portland eight years ago now and he was in middle school and then high school i started having more time to work on music again where when he was young it was kind of you look at the release schedule and there just wasn't a lot of releases when he was young because you know that was more important you know and and the, i know you lived in different places while you had the while you had project i mean in new york right you were there for a while and then i don't know i don't know the order but i know you lived in florida it was then, florida los angeles chicago and new york okay and then and, now, and now here in portland oh okay yeah wow i think um i remember it uh, you know when you were in new york I mean, I mean, there was so much going on at that time, but yeah, I remember. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's kind of helpful for me because I can remember what happened based on where I was. It's like, oh yeah, that was in the oh, yeah. LA era, you know, or the Chicago era. And like I was saying, this backdrop is from our festival in 97. We, we did two big festivals in 96 and 97 that had like a thousand and 1100 people. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was like the mid '90s, mid to late '90s were just a really great time in the music industry. There was just a lot of, mm -hmm. you know, people in America would travel to shows, and there was a lot more CD sales, and that's when we hooked up with Ryko Distribution and could get Borders, a name from the past. You know, the records were, or the CDs were available all over through Borders, so it all and really I, helped. You know, in fact, I I, um, I did an interview with Patrick Ogle of mm -hmm. the yeah, Fanitos. And um, yeah, we were talking about the, the the name and how to pronounce it. And I, I just told him, I'm gonna go talk to my Greek friend <laughs> who knows how to pronounce that. Who could pr pronounce that? Yeah, um, it might it might be slightly different in Greek. You're right. <laughs> I know. No, and um, yeah, we, we we talked a little bit about um, about project and about his his new release that's coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a country music um, theme 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 songs. Yeah. Yeah. Pat worked for a project. Well, I guess I should rewind. I knew Pat in high school and we, we played music together and we have we recorded the first two Thanatos albums together. Mm -hmm. And then can't remember the exact dates, but he worked for a project for maybe four or five years doing promotions. And 
we did an album called Portland together. He had a number of Thanatos albums that I wasn't on. Um, he was working. He had actually a band that toured. He had a, a real band as opposed to just the two of us. And then um, we did Portland together. Came out last year, I think. Mm -hmm. And, and um, we're now, we email all the time, but we're talking about work, starting to work on the next one. And then, and now, you know, your black tape for, for a blue girl has been around for what, 38 years or something like that. And I know there are different singers, right? Started out with Oscar Herrera. Was that, was mm -hmm. that the first singer? Oscar was the first singer in the band. Yeah. Um, he was on, is it the first five or six albums as the, the mm -hmm. main vocalist? And there were different female vocalists over the course of those albums, but Oscar and I were sort of the only consistent members up until 96. I, and then he was on two songs on the 98 album. And then I know Ethan was on there as well, one of the singers. Yeah. And outside, uh, there was a point, I don't, I don't remember the years. But, uh, Ethan sang on the 10 Neurotics album in 2009. Mm -hmm. And we, we probably played, I'm going to guess, 30 shows together with Ethan as the vocalist. Yeah. You know, what, is, what does that mean? How did you get the name Black Tape for a Blue Girl? Uh, it really just popped into my head. And mm -hmm. I've, I've never like said, well, this is exactly what I was thinking because people have interesting interpretations of it. So I kind of leave it to interpretations as long as they don't. I, I disagree with the ones that say I'm suggesting suicide or something like that. Or, you know, no, I, I, didn't, I didn't even think that. I, I think it's just so cool. I mean, you know, they have another band called um, Girls Under Glass. I like that. I like that name too. <laughs> Black Tape for a Blue Girl. I like it. I mean, it's so it's so unique. That's so why I, I yeah, don't I, know where it came from or what, what how did it was. Well, it I mean, it popped into my head, and I have my reasons, yeah. but I don't think my reasons matter to define it that way. Yeah. You know, and the, but the funny thing is, when Twitter was less characters, it was like, oh, half my tweet is my band name. You know, <laughs> because it's so long. So. It's it. There's a few bands with longer names, but it's a pretty long band name. So there's like how many albums came out? I, I know we have you have a new one now, which is a 13th album. So that's like 12 right. before that, right? Like several through the years. Right. 12 albums. The first one came out in 86. Mm -hmm. And um, there, you know, there's some EPs or best of albums and other things, too. But 13 studio albums. And the new one's The Cleft Serpent. Yeah, so th th this new one, I know you have a new vocalist as well, John De, De Rosa, and it's, it's beautiful. You know, it has a, you also have a, a is it a cello? Um, Henry plays cello. He plays a little bit of violin, and I think there's some viola in it. So he plays pretty much all string instruments. Yeah, I was, I was looking at the album, the cover, um, the, the cover of the album, which is really beautiful. They have all these different, um, um, I guess this must be the whole entire thing. I'm just looking at it right now, but. The Cleft Serpent, they have all the, who did all the, the images, the artwork? Well, so the, the cover photograph, I, I shot the photograph, but it's, I, I'm sort of on the cover at playing the character of the, of the album. And so that photo is from 95, but then the oh. stuff around it and Mercy on the Bottom is from this year. So it's, it, that one is actually a combination. And then when I was doing the Kickstarter, I connected with some different artists. Um, Andy Radborn does the graphic novel artists, and then an artist named Michael did the serpent um, logo. And so it, it was more collaborative with other people involved this time than past albums, which was, it was nice. You know, they were, they were artists I saw on Instagram and I liked their work and I just got in touch with them and they wanted to get involved in it. So that was cool. So what was the inspiration behind this album? Sorry, I'm going to go out of frame. I have a mock-up of the LP cover oh, right wow. here. Oh, that's so beautiful. Is, is it, so it's going to be in vinyl? Yeah, the vinyl, um, I think it's supposed to be here by February. It, it's, you know, vinyl is so slow these days, so it's later than the CD. Oh, wow. That's, that's soon. beautiful, yeah. So uh, what was the inspiration behind, like, well, what's the song, what's the album? Um, what's the theme of the album? Yeah, so... Originally, I was I was thinking of doing sort of a video with a character who then spoke and had narration, and so I had been thinking about that character, <clears throat> which is the, the cleft serpent character, and the idea I guess is like a vampire who lives forever. This character is sort of 
reborn into new people, but with the memories of all the messed up stuff he had done in the past and all the times he failed and let people down. And um, so it sort of has to do with, there's a Buddhist idea of oh, samsara. Yeah. Where samsara you're yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's that idea, but I, I guess I imagine he suddenly gets awakened or enlightened or whatever into himself at some point in a life that's already happened. And so then he looks around and goes, oh, I've already created all this destruction and now I'm interacting with this person to either try to not destroy more or destroy more. And so that character, uh, you know, it's, it's sort of time travel in that he, he comes back in new eras to mess up again, basically, or try to resolve that. And so that was sort of the idea. And then I had the, um, I had the concept of the characters and so I was just sort of like, okay, now I need to sort of put them into specific songs once it no longer was going to be a narrative form. And John, John actually was a fan of the band. He came to some of our shows in the nineties when he was still in high school. Mm -hmm. And then we were, we, you know, we peripherally were in touch and, but then, you know, we started working on this and he, he does his own music um, mm -hmm. either solo or with his band. And so it was a little bit of an experiment to see if he could play this character that was a little more melodramatic and a little more, you know, the lyrics, the content is a little more dramatic than maybe other songwriters would put in their songs. So we, we sort of tested it out and he was able to, I think a lot of people conceive of a songwriter, a performer always being mm -hmm. about themselves. And so it was a sort of an experiment to see if he could get into the character and do something different than himself. But it was, you know, I think it's kind of freeing to not have to always be talking about yourself in a lyric, you know, just to play a part. And so that, that idea worked out well. And then with Henrik, my idea was I wanted to form a song and then have a string player add to it so I could take more of my stuff out to yeah. like sort of minimize, make it more minimal. And Henrik was, his mood is just right for what I do. He just has the same sort of, he's in Sweden and he has this, you know, European angsty minimalist kind of thing that works well with the music. So finding these two new band members turned out really well. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I noticed that there's some Greek, um, um, you know, Greek um, uh, gods on, on the album, Greek names, Ares and Hermes. Hermes, um, yeah. So, was this written like before the pandemic or during the pandemic? Some of the the um the ideas that started like in two thousand and eighteen, and but it was recorded during the pandemic. Oh, okay. Um, okay. But the the ideas had already sort of been turning around, and it was just once I hooked, you know, connected with John, it was sort of like now narrowing it down into actual lyrics for the songs. Yeah. And, 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 and this, this is, uh, the, the, the one before this was back in 2008, 2008. Yeah. Right? yeah. Okay. Yeah. You and, know, I, 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 in fact, um, okay. No, I'll, I'll tell you later. Go ahead. Go ahead and finish up what you're going to well, say. Yeah. You mentioned Aries and Hermes and it was kind of, I was, you know, writing, writing lyrics, and just, just Googling ideas you know, mm -hmm. looking up things to try to, you know, get ideas. And I, I, I guess I realized somehow that Mercury and Hermes were kind of considered the trickster, which is the second character. That's right. Yeah. It, wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't just his speed that helped Mercury or Hermes, but it was also that he was tricky and that fit perfectly with my character. And then I started reading about Ares, who's like the Greek, Greek God of War, Roman God of War. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. Greek. Yeah. And, yeah, and God of War. And then there was a story where Hermes rec rescued Ares at one point. And so I was like, oh, this is just all really interesting how to match this together into another idea I had about like a, a, a battlefield and a, 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 a ruler who was very cruel. And so it was just like these new characters I created. Oh, wait, this is a perfect example of them in the past. So it was a way to you know, sort of put it into different eras, the ideas I was working on. Yeah, so everything just flowed well, naturally then, it looks, it seems, yeah? Wow. Mm -hmm. 
So I, I was going to mention that before this album, you had uh, to touch the, the the Milky Way or something. Yeah, right. Remember that? Yeah. I think? Yeah. yeah. And um, there's a song in, in my memories. Mm -hmm. And then there's a video on that with uh, Dan. Right. Sure. Yeah. So um, I didn't, I didn't, I never saw that video before until recently, but I, I know him. Um, uh -huh. Actually, one of the naughty boys, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah sure. From San Francisco, yeah. And um, yeah, I was just like, wow, there's Dan. <laughs> you know, I have, um, I actually have one of his, um, his one of his early, early, early song, like, I don't know, back in the early 90s. I have to go look for it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. Mer Mercy had worked with Dan in San Francisco. And um, I had the idea for the video and I didn't want to play the main character. So I, I had met Dan later at uh, an ev uh, kink event in San Francisco. And so, so I already sort of knew Dan and it was like, oh, hey, Dan and I have a lot in common, even though, you know, musicians of a certain age had been around for a while doing this music. So, you know, it was easy to connect. And then I found out that he's up here in Portland often. And so uh -huh. that video, which was shot before the pandemic, it was just like I said, hey, do you want to play this character in this video I have in mind? And so it just, you know, I, it worked out well because that way I could do the shooting and, um, someone else would play the part as opposed to me trying to do both and so then mercy is the other person in the video and it was just you know it, it took me forever to actually get the video done to the point that you'll notice mercy has three different hair colors in the video because it, i shot it over so much time but it kind of fits with the story which is about time mm -hmm. yeah now this is a great album i like the cover i like the songs and uh are, are you happy with this one with the cleft serpent Oh yeah, I, I feel really good about it. And I, I, it's, you mentioned various vocalists over the years and it's the first album that has only three band members. It's the first album that only one person sings the whole album. So for me, it's also new just because it's not, it has many things that are different from past the way Black Tape was structured. And so it, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's fun to do something different. And it came out the way I, I had imagined it before I started on it as far as the strings and the vocals and just the less electronics. Be, you know, before I forget, big shout out to Michelle at UTM Music Group. <laughs> oh, yeah. The guy. Yeah. yeah, totally great guy. He's like, he's like, I, I'm so glad, you know, I, I, I connect with, every, you know, the internet is just um, Facebook and it's just incredible, you know, just connecting everybody. Like, uh, I, I always wanted to interview you for a very long time. And, um, you know, I always said, okay, I want to do an interview with him. And then, you know, it just never happens, but, um, so I guess when the time is right, it, it, it will happen <laughs> You know, uh -huh. yeah. it's about timing. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's such, um, such an honor to have you in the show. Do you have any, um, anything else ha coming up in the future? I mean, is, is, is black tape you think going to be touring in the, in the, in the near future? Um, I, I don't expect that we will be touring. It's actually been a decade since our last show and it's, it's just really difficult, I guess. I mean, what I'm working on next is I'm going to be doing a crowdfunding for A Chaos of Desire, which was the 1990, 91, 90, 90 LP from the band. Well, it was CD from the band then. It's going to be a two LP and a CD release. And okay. John and I are, are working on some more songs. Probably what we're going to do first is re-record some older songs, but in this, the new style with John and Henrik. So um, we have started working on that idea but the the next the cleft serpent lps like i said are hopefully going to be here by early february and i'm going to get those out to the backers who backed it on kickstarter and then i'm going to start on the chaos of desire mm -hmm. really. and then project is just incredibly busy it's like every two weeks or so there's a new digital release on the label so there's a lot of electronic and ambient releases coming out so that's Kind of that's what I do most of my day is you know preparing those and working on the text and working with the artists. Yeah, you know I, I know because I know you work really hard. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, the, it's, I'm so glad that um, you're still pushing, you're still doing this, and still out there. You know, you yeah, know, it's, been, it's been a long time, and I'm. Just glad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it project got very successful in the mid '90s, but it also got really in debt in the mid '90s, so it was really stressful at the same time as it was doing really well. And so now it's, it's just mellowed out into something that works and it's not in debt anymore. So it's a lot more fun doing it without that kind of stress. Yeah. 
Well, you know, it, it, it has a really good energy. I don't know Thank how you. to explain that to you, but yeah, I mean, I, I love the music and um, yeah, yeah, I appreciate, yeah, I appreciate you coming on the show and talking about this. And we're looking forward to playing the the Clef Serpent and um, your latest album. You know, congratulations on that. And um, um, I'm sure next year or the year next, you're going to have another album coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it takes a little while, but it, it will come. Are you thinking of working with the same the same singer again? The same. The yeah. Same? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I didn't really like want to continuously find new people in the band. It's a sort of just, where we were located, where people were at at the time, just sort of how things worked out. So it would be nice to work with the same people again. So the Clef Serpent, which is which is out now in Project, and if anybody want to check that out, they can always go to your label, project.com, which is P-R-O-J-E-K-T.com. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, that's the best place to find it, right? Um, yeah, I mean, for people who want to buy things, and if not, it's streaming everywhere, Spotify and Pandora and YouTube. So right. it's up there, too. Bandcamp, Bandcamp as well? Oh, yeah, yeah of course. Bandcamp. Bandcamp, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, anything else we didn't mention? Let's see. The only thing I was, I was just thinking you had mentioned before we started is um, Shay has worked for me for 20 years now doing publicity and stuff. So part of when you say Project has a nice vibe, part of that is Shay's doing things, you know, oh, so right. stuff to help, you know, get the word out on the label. And then um, a guy named Joe does the mail order in Philadelphia. Um, so it's sort of, I'm sitting here in Portland doing my part and then they're doing things out there. You know, they all, Joe probably connects the most with people who are buying from the label these days because he's doing the mail order. So it's good to have people who are, you know, loyal to it and helping out too. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a collaboration, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Shay's an amazing spirit. I, I, I love her energy as well. Um, yeah, yeah. Like, like I mentioned, she came to Hawaii like I think three years ago and yeah, just the energy. I mean, you can feel somebody's energy, you know, when you first meet mm -hmm. her. So, sure. yeah, and including yours. So thank you so much for being on the show. And yeah, and, um, you know, if people are listening um, to this in the YouTube video, you know, uh, you know, make a comment and tell us your favorite project, man. I guess we could say that, you know, mm -hmm. sure. um, I have a lot. I'm not going to mention them because I'm, <laughs> I don't want I don't want people to say, well, how come you pick me? You know, <laughs> but, you know, yeah, I, I, yeah. I definitely discovered a lot of music from from the project label. So, yeah. And I, and, and I know other people have, too. I'm not the only one that's going to say that <laughs> because, you know, people discover music through labels, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. OK, well, you know, well, thank you. Thank you for being on the show. I really appreciate um, you coming on and then meeting yeah, thank you. you so much. Thanks. All right. Well, I'm going to I'm just going to stop the video. One okay. moment. Let me just stop the video here. I always have the hardest time trying to find that video thing here because, <laughs> OK, let me see. One moment. Let me just.